Welcome to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. The latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Sitting in for Bob Bennis, here's Father Paul Hartman. Hello and welcome to Living Our Faith on Relevant Radio. My name is Father Paul Hartman, Judicial Vicar of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and President of Catholic Memorial High School in Waukesha, substituting this week for Bob Bennis. He couldn't be with us, but I am honored to be here today with our host, the real host of the show, Archbishop Jerome Lestecki. Archbishop Lestecki, how are you doing today? Good, Paul. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Good. Quite well, thank you. Lots of things happening in, in our society, in the church today. And I always, when people ask me, how do we deal with whatever's going on, I have two go-to responses. It's, you know, what is what does Christ teach us in the scriptures? But then what do we learn from, you know, the saints? What do we learn from... Uh, those powers and presence that God has in the world. And there's just a great infatuation, probably began about 15 years ago, with angels. Sure, even a little bit more than that, Paul. But I, I would hope, I, I would, knowing your mom a little bit, I, <laughs> um, and probably with the teachers growing up, they were always kind of reminding you about these invisible creatures, these mm-hmm. these angels. You know, um, in, in my grammar school, you had to sit towards the end of your uh, of your seat behind the desk to make room for your guardian angel mm-hmm. which basically was assigned to you now um, now s- certain times the guardian angel you know as a boy growing up certainly left me you yeah. know <laughs> yes <laughs> alert yes. you know uh, or I uh, failed to take uh, the, the angel's guide but there's always something beautiful about <clears throat> even in in terms of the the uh, spirituality and the pictures of the you know, you've seen that one of uh, the young boy and girl kind of walking through woods, and you see this figure of the angel kind of mm-hmm. guiding them, you know, through um, basically the, the the darkness, if you want, uh, of their life, or through uh, throughout any dangers. So the, there is a sense, but there isn't a proper approach to angels. Well, I would think it is probably while it's one of the most pervasive history renderings of the presence of God, the renderings or the action of, of God in the world. It is also one of the most misunderstood uh, of so much of our faith. It lends itself um, so easily for uh, to the pop culture, mm-hmm. and and therefore to be re- redefined or refashioned the way basically individuals in the society uh, would like the high priests and priestesses of the TV and airwaves, you know, that suddenly claim angels, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so-called angel networks and uh, basically um, an angel today or a glorification of angels, but not willing to accept the, the real kind of sense of, of angels, the way the church teaches. I, um, you know, <laughs> I quickly tell people, I said, we own angels. So study our books, understand our teaching. We own angels. You know, you, you come to angels because it fits nice into your vocabulary uh, of today, but but actually, angels were revealed uh, by the church and, and have a certain philosophical um, aspect in the hierarchy of beings. To help us understand this, to help the the church and the archdiocese of Milwaukee to understand this and and other things spiritual, we have as our guest today Father Cliff Ermatinger. Cliff's a good friend, a good friend of the archbishops, and truly has a lot of insight to share with us about the the study the theology of angels cliff why don't you introduce yourself tell us what your ministry is nowadays and then begin to bring us into the story of angel well thanks father paul i grew up in chicago i I might add that i met the archbishop when i was 14 Uh, he was the prefect of discipline at our uh, minor seminary and i was a freshman and uh last first time i met him i guess was in his office with my demer- demerit card in hand that's that's I, about i think we could have a whole series that's of shows about all we'll say about like that, that. Yeah, rightfully so though rightfully so I, it was it it helped form and fashion your life, Cliff. <laughs> it was character building. <laughs> so, um, that's my life. <laughs> that's what I was told anyway. Well, my ministry here in the diocese is called a spiritual consultant. So I, I, I deal with all sorts of alleged extraordinary phenomena that's reported. And, and the church has a very clear, convincing 
body of principles and teaching on how to deal with every sort of situation, whether it's somebody who's saying they have a vision or a locution, by location, whatever. In fact, if I could by locate, I would stay in bed and I'd send the other guy out to work. <laughs> but uh, that's not <laughs> that, other has, guy. that hasn't that's happened yet. <laughs> but about angels in particular, you know, ever since the early 90s, there's been um, a fascination with them. And I think this has been appropriated, unfortunately, by the New Age movement. And why? Why is that? When the church has always had a very clear, logical, beautiful, full teaching on angelology, I think it's a substitute. They become a substitute for God. And we, we misuse this this term angel so often when somebody dies. Well, he's an angel now. No, that's that's a separated soul. That's, a, that's somebody who went to eternity. Uh, it doesn't, our nature, our, our nature doesn't change. We have a human nature. Angels have an, have an angelic nature. And so that's not true. That's another misappropriation of, of the term. But I think the new age movement took angels as, as God light. In other words, there's a God who doesn't give us a doctrine, which was true yesterday is true today and will be true tomorrow. It's also a God who doesn't judge our actions. It's just something that's kind of like background music to sunsets. You know, it's, <laughs> It's just good. exactly. It's warm and fuzzy. Some depictions of angels really are. Well, every every depiction of an angel is going to be inadequate to a certain extent. But I, above all, I think the the Gerber baby with wings that that one I really don't like from the Baroque period. And just because angels are powerful, they're very powerful. You think about John when he, when he was on Patmos and he saw an angel. He fell down in dread, thinking it was God. And he says, get on your feet, John. I'm just a creature like you. But that, he was looking at an angel. And so he was frightened. So these are, these are fierce, powerful creatures. They're not little babies with wings. And However, let me, let me uh, help you uh, rehabilitate that little baby with wings. Thank you. That little baby with wings usually are depicted it as the cherubim and seraphim. Right. And the cherubim and seraphim in the choirs of angels. They're the highest. They're the, they're they the are, highest. They are, they are the highest. They are right like next to God in terms of uh, the, the adoration of, uh, exactly. of, of God. And that's how the nine choirs would be considered. You, the closer you get to God, there's that sense of the, the power, cherubim, the power, the, the power. purity, Intellect, the will. The, but then those that are extend themselves more into the world, the messengers, it's the a huge, are, it's a hierarchy. And this is this is the one situation where big government works. You've got <laughs> you've got our Lord who, you know, who is sharing his power with his creation. And, you know, Thomas has a, has a saying called bonum divus evum sui. Goodness is expansive. It shares itself. So so the fact that we have the communion of saints, the fact that we have all of these angels working for us doesn't diminish God's power. It manifests his goodness. It manifests his love because he allows us to share in his project. And the angels, when you go from the top, who are the, the seraphim, that means, that's Hebrew, means the burning ones. Why? Because they're the closest to our Lord. And you go all the way down to the, the lowest choir. There are nine choirs. The lowest choir, they're just called angels. The second lowest, they're archangels. They all have a mission, and part of it is contemplative, part of it is active. The higher up you go, the more contemplative it is. And this is what the church has also taught about our own religious vocations, you know, the highest, the most noble vocation was the pure contemplative, the hermit and the monk, and not many people are called to that, but we're all called to be active and contemplative in order to work, in other words, to work for our Lord's kingdom and to be men and women of prayer. And angels do that. One thing that's interesting about angels, not only how powerful they are, is how many there are. <laughs> How many angels are there? Nobody really knows except for our Lord and the angels, obviously. But we don't know. Church fathers would take the parable of the lost sheep and say, we are the one sheep that was lost, the 99 that didn't get lost. Those are the angels. In other words, the church fathers would say there are a hundred times more angels than angels humanity ever was is and will be now uh, back to the comparison of of people and angels in terms of numbers the guardian angels are taken from the lowest choir it's also the smallest choir according to thomas the smallest choir that is the lowest choir those are the angels so just think of every person from adam up and you know and everybody who existed up until our times everybody who exists now and everybody who will exist up until the eschaton judgment day everyone has one non-recyclable angel. 
and that's from the smallest choir. And well, and what's what's heartening is that that which is closest to the Lord, then, is if I understand what you're saying, is more numerous, more plentiful. <laughs> than that which is far from the Lord. Exactly. We have to take a break. We have to take a break for some news headlines from the Catholic Herald, for some news from our Catholic schools throughout the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. And we will come back and we will hear uh, more about angels from Father Cliff. We will be right back in a few minutes. You are listening to Living Our Faith on Relevant Radio. This is Don Barclay and Corey Lindsley. Here's our friend and Uptown Motor sales manager, Jeff Sardina. Hello, fellow Catholics. Football is over and spring is just around the corner. You owe it to yourself to stop in to see what's happening at Uptown Motors and the difference when it comes to purchasing a new or pre-owned vehicle. More and more relevant radio listeners are choosing Uptown Motors. When you purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle from Uptown, we'll donate $200 to the school or parish of your choice, plus $100 to their food pantry. Uptown Motors is the dealership that gives back to the community, and they've been doing it for years. As a Catholic, why go anywhere else? Take it from me. When you stop in and meet the Uptown team, you'll see the difference. Uptown Ford on Mayfair Road, just south of North Avenue, or Uptown Motors in Slinger. Go to RelevantRadio.com, keyword Uptown. Uptown Motors, Catholic-owned and Catholic-proud. Good morning. I'm Grace David with headlines from the Catholic Herald and CatholicHerald.org. Last week, Father Jeffrey Haynes and Father Jim Shurman were ordained and became auxiliary bishops of Milwaukee in a beautiful liturgical ceremony at St. John the Evangelist Cathedral. Read all about the majesty of the event at the Catholic Herald website, catholicherald.org. Archbishop Jerome Listecki points out that the line of apostolic succession for himself and his two new auxiliary bishops, Jeffrey Haynes and Jim Shurman, dates back to the original Twelve Apostles. In his Herald of Hope column this week, the Archbishop says the stained-glass windows of the St. John the Evangelist Cathedral were smiling this week. This is just a sample of the inspirational stories you can find at catholicherald.org. In other news, being a strong man and the leader of a household anchored in faith can be a tough job. However, to help Catholic men, the Men of Christ will hold their annual conference and rally in downtown Milwaukee. The Men of Christ Conference is April 1st at the Milwaukee Theater. You can discover more about their mission in this week's Catholic Herald. All this and much, much more can also be found at catholicherald.org. And now news from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee Catholic Schools. St. Charles Borromeo students recently heard a message of inspiration from a visiting guest, Thomas Awiapo. Thomas grew up in a small African village in Ghana, was orphaned before the age of 10, and left to struggle on his own. He survived, studied, and eventually earned a master's degree from California State University. Today, Thomas works with Catholic Relief Services as an integral part in bringing global solidarity. He lives in Ghana with his wife and four children. St. Francis Cabrini Middle School students will compete on March 25th to keep their state championship title in forensics from last year. The team placed first in the extra-large team division, with 70% of the school's middle school students on the team. West Bend schools have a long and strong tradition in middle school forensics and were instrumental in starting the Wisconsin Middle School Forensics Organization. Best of luck, Cabrini. Congratulations to 12 of our very own scholars and teachers who will receive Herb Cole Foundation Awards. $52,000 in awards and scholarships are being made to our exceptional Catholic teachers and graduating high school students. Excellence, Scholarship, Fellowship, and Leadership Award recipients are selected by a statewide competition composed of civic leaders, representatives of education-related associations, and academic co-sponsors. This is Grace David. Thank you for listening. We now return you to Living Our Faith with Archbishop Listecki. Welcome back to Living Our Faith on Relevant Radio. My name is Father Paul Hartman. I am the Judicial Vicar of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and President of the Ar- uh, President of Catholic Memorial High School in Waukesha. Our focus today, we have our guest, Father Cliff, uh, author of many books and uh, spiritual consultant for the Archdiocese, uh, so many varied matters. But our focus today are angels. Archbishop, the quick quiz, 
What are the nine choirs of angels? Cherubim, seraphim, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, virtues, archangels, and angels. The angels, and the, obviously, again, as Father Cliff said, the lowest, the lowest rung of the hierarchy. But Cliff, there's a philosophical truth about this that that angels provide and and have because that's why Thomas, you know, was so so diligent, why he's the angelic doctor, and and that philosophical uh, aspect is. That principle is called the principle of plenum, the of fullness. In other words, there is a hierarchy of being and of existence. So, you know, we have grains of sand. We've got all of this inanimate matter. And then we've got little microbes, germs, mussels, and sea urchins. And then we get all the way up to the most noble of animals, my dog, for example. <laughs> and then, then all of a sudden we've got this animal which is in fleshed spirit human the human being the human person which is spirit where we are spiritual beings we're also material beings and then there's this there would be a void if we went from the lowest rung of existence to this hybrid in fleshed spirit human person then to god so thomas says that of needs there must be pure spirits who are not material they are, and those are the angels, and they're just intellects and wills. Now, what's interesting is we all share the same human nature, but we're differentiated by our bodies and our own spiritual psychological history. And this is what individuates us because we're matter. Angels, since they're immaterial and nonetheless real, how are they going to be distinguished if they are just intellects and wills? Each one is its own nature, says Thomas. So imagine that. Imagine, imagine the imagination of God, how he can create so many billions and billions of angels, and each one is different. And nonetheless, we've collated them into these different choirs, the lowest choirs, right? The angels and the archangels and uh, principalities there. They're more involved with the material world, the created world, as we see it what we see our lives and the higher up you go the less involved in the hierarchy of angels the less involved are they in they're still involved but not as much involved in our lives and the higher you go all the way up to the seraphim they're pure contemplatives who just contemplate our lord and love him and are loved by him yeah. you know the wonderful thing you, you talked earlier about the power of an angel whenever uh, a young uh, man will be will come up before me and take the name Michael For, first of all I can tease him a little bit I said Michael male or female he'll look right back at me and say male I go nope he goes female and I go nope he go what what is he what's his name then nature is angel yep. you know angel and and then I then I kind of push him a little bit and um, you know I'll say you know it, 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 we can't fathom the power of an angel I mean, yeah. take take the the greatest material power in the world. What the splitting of an atom, uh, fusion, it pales in comparison to basically the pure intellect of the power and pure intellect of right. they are so beyond us in terms of intellect and will. They're so, but they, at the same time, they have their limits because right. because they're creatures. They don't know the future unless it's revealed to them by God. They can't read our thoughts unless we will to communicate with them. So if we just pray silently to our guardian angel, which we should do, he hears us because we want to imagine they don't have mouths. They don't have ears. So how do they communicate with each other through their wills? They will to communicate, and that's how they, they know what each, each one is, is saying to the other. And, you know, there's such a um, a multiplicity of angels. We, we must be like their pets to them, you know, because we, <laughs> we're kind of dumb. We're weak. We're, we're so inconstant. We change our minds. And angels, on the other hand, they, they see with such clarity. When they make a decision, they don't change their minds. But yet, as some of the church fathers say, uh, Cliff, the, we are the envy of the angels. Why? Uh -huh. Why are we the envy of the angels? We're the envy of demons, that's for sure. <laughs> because we can be forgiven. Right. And we can desire. Just imagine, we can desire God. And who became who became one? Obviously, God jumped over all of the angels and became one of us, right. the, the incarnation. And he didn't consult them. <laughs> and this, say some of the church fathers, was the cause of the fall. The very fact that God became man, jumping over all the angels, becoming one of us, remaining God, and they would adore him and serve this all central mystery of the incarnation.
was so astounding, it was even repulsive for Lucifer and other angels who decided to rebel. I will not serve, non servia. And that's, say, that some of the church fathers is the cause for the fall of Satan and, and the one third of all of those, imagine all of those angels, that huge, vast horde that God created, one third of them, say the church fathers. Uh, we, we're, they're referring to Gen, um, Revelation 12. One third of them decided, I will not serve. And they fell, condemned themselves. And it was because of the incarnation. Now, you know, you, uh, bringing that up, many of the New Age, the, they love to embrace basically angels. And obviously, um, you know, because they come into their purview and you can fashion and construct them the way right. you want. And they, they, they want to do warm fuzzies for you and do all, do all those kind of good things. Rarely do you have those same people acknowledge that there are the fallen angels, that there are angels who are not out to do good and out just to to serve our, our goodness, but there are those that that want to interfere, tempt us, and, exactly. and pull us away from God. And or they're viewed, <clears throat> these fallen angels are viewed almost with this, they're just misunderstood. They're the humorous. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, there's a television series now, Lucifer. About, oh, yeah, you Lucifer. Know, and then, yeah, yeah. you know, it's the ba- it's the angel, you know, the angel with this pitchfork on your right. other shoulder. Supernatural. So they just, <laughs> you know, they undervalue. I think the same way they undervalue the purity and the goodness of right. the angels, they undervalue or underestimate the, the evil that is that is brought into the world. Exactly. And and, and notice there the, the that the root of it is a type of a religiosity that I create and I control. In other words, I'm not going to be held up to a standard here, God's will, that I didn't vote for, that I don't make. And so they satisfy their, they think to satisfy their own spiritual need with this, not realizing that you don't create reality. We can try and come up with our own ideas, but reality is something we discover and we live in the midst of. And the church has presented us the true teaching on God and angels and the nature of man. And this is something that we have to receive with a lot of gratitude. Um, What people, unfortunately, who get involved in the New Age movement don't understand is that they open themselves up to a lot of spiritual dangers. And that is a playground for for Satan, the, the New Age movement and so many people have brought upon themselves all sorts of spiritual problems, often without knowing it, and sometimes knowing why, but not thinking this is just part of the price I pay for all of this illumination that I've received, and the devil gives them all sorts of what he what they would consider perks. But once they, they, they approach Christ, maybe they go on a retreat, they go to confession, they go to mass for the first time. Then things start to happen to them, and and the devil who had this person under his power then explodes because before he was there, almost like a virus. Who was better said, he was like a couch potato. He was just there enjoying life in this person, making this person suffer in, in certain ways, and now his position is threatened because this person is approaching Christ and the sacraments and the church. And, of course, what does John say in his letter? He says, Christ came to undo the works of Satan. Remember, too, that if we hold to the Catholic Church's teaching on angels, then we have a clear view. Paul addressed the Corinthians and said, you know, about their exaggerated view of the angels. And so this isn't just a new problem. Christ is not one more angel. We see that in Hebrews. What God, what angel did God call my son, right? And so this is back to the centrality of the incarnation. And the angels were created to serve that. And even though they're they're above us, they they serve us. But we have a we have a we have a duty to to thank them and to pray to them and and to 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 give them the honor that is their due. Archbishop, with just about a, a minute to go, a little more. Uh, you know, you you wanted this as a as a theme and as a subject. What do you hope that? your average Catholic takes away from a, a reflection like we've had? Yeah, uh, and pretty simply, Father Paul, that, um, the, that the teaching of the, of the church is, is pretty firm, and um, it, it directs us to a proper understanding of, um, of angels, uh, of the, those wonderfully um, pure spirits that, that God has given to us. And although they're in our kind of like um, popular vocabulary, and, and, and we'll hear people use them, we should be more sophisticated in terms of our faith understanding where God has placed them in relationship to to basically the created as created beings and 
how the, God has fashioned them to, to help literally serve his purpose for us in this world and how the proper use of, um, uh, of angels, when we understand like a guardian angel or we pray to angels, we're praying for them to help us be instruments of his, of his will in this world. At the same time, I want people to have a, a very sophisticated and sober look at those fallen angels and understand that there are the entities there that try to pull us away from, from God and that there are things that entice us into uh, basically that relationship. So yeah, uh, wonderfully having Father Cliff here to help kind of clarify us. And, and, and as you can see in our smiles on our faces, it's a fascinating subject. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's a fascinating subject because it expands our magic. We're no longer just people of this world, but we understand how God has created all, uh, all of uh, living being and creation expands so far above what we uh, can imagine. We need to take our final break before we finish with prayers. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Father Cliff. You are listening to Living Our Faith on Relevant Radio. This is Don Barclay and Corey Lindsley. Here's our friend and Uptown Motor sales manager, Jeff Sardina. Hello, fellow Catholics. Football is over, and spring is just around the corner. You owe it to yourself to stop in to see what's happening at Uptown Motors and the difference when it comes to purchasing a new or pre-owned vehicle. More and more relevant radio listeners are choosing Uptown Motors. When you purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle from Uptown, we'll donate $200 to the school or parish of your choice, plus $100 to their food pantry. Uptown Motors is the dealership that gives back to the community, and they've been doing it for years. As a Catholic, why go anywhere else? Take it from me. When you stop in and meet the Uptown team, you'll see the difference. Uptown Ford on Mayfair Road, just south of North Avenue, or Uptown Motors in Slinger. Go to RelevantRadio.com, keyword Uptown. Uptown Motors, Catholic-owned and Catholic-proud. Dr. Thatcher is a retired physician. He's the founder of the Eucharistic Apostles of Divine Mercy. He's traveled the planet spreading the message of Divine Mercy. Sure, can I jump yeah, in one please. other thought, though, that, that really is important for me and my heart? I have seen, as I've traveled all over the world spreading Divine Mercy, I have seen the power of Catholic radio. When I go out and talk, it may be to 50 people, it may be to 100 or 200, but you can reach thousands at any one time and really change the world. And I cannot emphasize to people enough the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic formation, understanding the faith, helping people as you do to live their faith. And I would ask people, give what they can to Relevant Radio to keep this thing going. Relevant Radio is listener-supported radio. Please call now with your tax-deductible donation. 1-877-291-0123 one 877 or donate online at RelevantRadio.com. Welcome back to Living Our Faith on Relevant Radio. My name is Father Paul Hartman. We've been talking about angels, and both the Archbishop and Father Cliff have different prayers to angels that they learned as kids. We'll use that as our close. Right, and, and we will. Um, and probably right after the sign of the cross and the Hail Mary, you know, you said uh, basically uh, you were taught the um, the prayer to your guardian angel. So, Father Cliff, why don't you, you do yours first, and I'll follow up afterward. Angel sent by God to guide me, be my light and walk beside me, be my guardian and protect me, on the paths of life direct me. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. And may the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This has been Living Our Faith on Relevant Radio. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. Tune in again next week. This has been Living Our Faith with Archbishop Jerome Listecki. Join us again next week for the latest news, important issues, and stories of Catholics living their faith in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. 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 Milwaukee.